guys. Our oh mics are on. I think it's for real. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, What's up, cute. QXC? How's it going, Wolf? You ready for this? I'm ready for We're this. So We're doing ready. a ready yes, handshake. This is the ready handshake. <laughs> we um, just came up with it right now, yep. actually. It's uh, it was pretty pretty hard to come up with though. I have a diagram. Oh, we don't have the the note passing paper. Oh yeah. Well, I guess we'll have to do something about that during the break. Can we pass this box? I don't know what this is. That There's box is actually it. a stand. Sometimes you can put things on it like this. It makes them a little bit higher. Can I balance this pen? No, no. I can't balance it. I failed. Bad. I'm disappointed. Can you balance it? Try it. All right, all right. Wait, but before I balance the pen, first match of the day is Lenok Zerg versus Dream. That'll be coming up soon. Right now, I'm going to try and balance this pen. <laughs> Go for it, man. It's actually not possible. It's, it, it is actually impossible. Thanks to our sponsors, Pepsi and G-Skill, by the way. <laughs> Can you balance a pen on top of that G-Skill? Go for it. Oh, wait. No, that's not actually oh, a real thing. It. That's just in the... That's no, just no, no, yeah, no, I know. I mean, like, but if you, like, bounce it on that, it looked like it was bouncing on, on top of G-Skill. Oh, I see what you meant. Yeah, but it just, it would have covered all of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, balance the pen. All right, you owe me 20 bucks. I'm, like, kicking the desk and making it fall over. It's not working. <laughs> All right, I owe you 20 bucks. Seriously, guys, though, we were just messing around. We're actually casting the GSL. This is code A. And, uh, Wait, we're casting? Yeah. I thought, I thought we were just balancing pens. No, yeah, we're on camera. This is really happening. Oh, all right, This cool. isn't a test run, QXC. People on the internet are, like, posting tweets about it. <laughs> posting on uh, Team Liquid saying we're crazy. All okay. right, so here's the brackets. Dream versus Linux, our first match, obviously. Noble S versus Tassar will be after this. All of these matches will be today, by the way. Bon Burns versus Puzzle. I just said Bon Bon's in a really weird voice. And Happy versus ASD will be the last match of the day. So we've got every Terran matchup, actually, today. Indeed, I'm excited. Last uh, The last time I cast it, I think there was only one matchup with Terran in it. There's a lot of PvP, a lot of PvZ, but we're going to hit the whole range of things here. TVZ, TVP, TVT. PvP. Yeah, whatever. PvP is yeah, going to be got, in there. It'll be a little PvP. quick game. Yeah, you know? just just pound those out real quick. We can do uh, <laughs> Blink against... Uh, make sure to follow GOM TV at Twitter. That is twitter.com slash GOM TV. Check it out. Um, you can get more information about them as they release it. Yep. Also go to m.gomtv.net on your mobile phone. Check that out. You know, if you've got a smartphone, you want to watch your VODs on your smartphone on the subway, maybe. What does the mobile phone thing actually do? It lets you watch VODs? Yeah, it actually is like the entire GOM TV site squeezed into a little page, and you can uh, look at the VODs, you can look at the schedule. So let's take a look at this is our Terran player for the first match. Uh, Dream on the team MVP. The people he played so far, I am ready and OGS Lovesick. Yep. Uh, and he 2 0 and 2 1 them. And upcoming in the round of eight, he's going against Lena. A little known fact about Dream is he actually knocked out FXO Moonen in the Code A qualifiers yep. to get here. So. And he also uh, beat Ace in that's the Code A that's qualifiers. True, yep. Very, very exciting game. I think I saw about there was a mothership and like PFs and nukes. It was pretty crazy. It was crazy. Um, I'd highly recommend that if you guys come down here if you can go to the Code, Code A qualifiers. Even if you're not going to play them, just watch. You can stand behind people's computers as long as you're not yelling in their ears and stuff. Now here's Leenok. He took out Hope Torture 2. Oh, Hope Torture was... A really good Terran back in the earlier seasons. He's kind of falling down. He's actually streaming on Team Liquid now, playing on the NA server. He's trying to figure stuff out. I don't know what he's doing, man. I'm not sure. He also took out Yoda 2-0. Yoda known to drop mules at inappropriate times in TVZs. Yoda, quite a good player. I'm not sure who he went through at the qual qualifiers. I actually don't remember either, because I think it was during that time I was just watching you guys play, so I didn't really pay attention to played earlier in the day. But uh, yeah, Leonox actually really patient, Zerg. He plays really, really good CDT right now. Let's take a look at the map list here. Belshire Beach, Terminus RE, and Zelnaga Cavern. Um, Belshire Beach I haven't played too much. I think it's a Zerg favored map. Um, and I think Terminus and Zell could both... Terminus, maybe either Zell, I would say, is a little Terran favored. I would agree with that. It's very difficult when you the Terran controls the middle of the map for the Zerg to be very mobile, especially if they have the watchtowers. Yeah. Uh, PF at the gold on uh, Zelnaga is very strong. Yeah. Belshire Beach is a map that we've pretty much only seen in the GSL and the GSTL. Yeah. Um, for any of the foreigners who have been playing in tournaments, you probably haven't really practiced it much at all. I know I've only played it very little. Um, but it is a very nice, it's like a, it's a pretty map. Yeah, it is very pretty. Like, I see Belshire Beach, and I want to take a vacation there. I do, too. You want to go together? All right, man. Let's go Let's next go summer. To, can we do the handshake? We can do the... We need to come up with an actual handshake. Yeah, we do. We need to, like, we need to go behind, it's like, the parent trap handshake. <laughs> That's what we need to do, man. Um, and the loading screen, so we'll be jumping in the game 
one second here. A um, few more than one second. Okay, actually. so like 10 seconds. <laughs> 10 one seconds. It's actually like 12.6 seconds. Don't correct me. <laughs> Turns out we were both wrong. And here we are on Belshire Beach in the bottom right-hand corner, the Red Terran. It's what you have at night, known as... MVP Dream. And there he is, MVP Dream. Isn't he dreamy? Oh, he's adorable. Woo! Splash. All right. There you go. Over here on the left side, a member of the team Foyu, a really young and talented Zerg player. He is. You know, Foyu. Did you see I that? Actually, he pointed the finger. Yeah, out. he said Foyu. Foyu. It's for me, man. Bam! That splashes. It's dramatic. Sounds like a splash of Pepsi to it me. It does. Man. It does sound like a splash of Pepsi. Somebody who was thirsty just got their drink. <laughs> they really did. This map is actually really interesting because I think it is the only map in the GSL and GSTL that you can actually wall in with just one barracks and a supply depot. That's right. Um, on Tall Dream Altar, I think there was a time where you could do it. But you can't really do that. Oh, maybe when they the choke. I feel like they changed the choke. Yeah, there. they did. Well, it's like Blizzard changed it, and then the GSL started using Blizzard's version of it, and so that's uh, kind of how that works. Yeah, that's really annoying. I don't like when Blizzard changes map. Or, well, I don't know. Sometimes they make good changes, sometimes they make bad changes. Yeah, I think Blizzard's really trying to figure things out. Right. I actually respect what Blizzard's doing because I think they're trying to uh, trying to change maps in such a way that the community likes it and yeah, it helps and everyone. I mean, it's a hard thing to do. The it's extremely difficult. Very picky. Um, so, interesting thing here, I would imagine Lenok is basically in the position so far that he predicted. Zero scouting information, um, except that there is no add-on, and... Um, from Lenok, we do see hatch first. Very fast extractor and a very early spawning pool. Usually we're seeing Zergs do this more and more because it helps fend off basically any kind of two, any two. Any pressure, very early speedlings, very good at that. It's very true. I'm thinking Dream's most likely going to be going for reactor Hellions. He's going to start his factory here on the high ground. That's a good choice. Um, one thing to note, uh, if the Zerglings do push up next to the supply depot there, they will not see the factory. If you built it a little far back, sometimes you accidentally build it too close to the wall, the factory gets spotted, they know what you're doing, and then they blind counter you, but it's not blind because they just scouted you. Exactly. Isn't that crazy how that works? Yeah, it is crazy how that works. It's Lee not... Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, Lenok actually did a really good job with his drones there, checking to make sure that there wasn't any sort of bunker shenanigans going he on. He actually didn't leave an overlord at his natural, which is actually really strange. Well, the reason why you don't leave it there is because there's nowhere to really hide it where marines can't get it, because there's already that high ground area if you build a factory there, or if you just lift up your barracks, it gives vision, and a lot of Terrans like to do that right now. It's kind of been something that switched a little bit on this map. Wait, what are you talking about? So there's that little position over there. We'll get a shot in a second. You can see where that overlord is right there on the screen. Yeah. If you put it there, the Terran can just lift up a barracks and get vision of it and kill it. So he, to, he does have one okay. near the natural. Okay, but so it's you actually don't actually know what I'm talking about. Oh, okay, maybe Okay, not. so what I was talking about is <laughs> usually the Zerg leaves an overlord at their natural. Oh, their so natural. So they can see if a bunker is building because the hatchery has really low vision. Right, right, right. And Lenok didn't do that. Yeah, he did and drones that, instead. That's, that's all weird. I was commenting on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we have an understanding now, QXC. <laughs> you were explaining that, I was like, that actually isn't what I was talking about at all. You're like, the Zerg, the Zerg can see if he <laughs> folds a barracks, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so, so, two Hellions moving out right now. He did go for that reactor opening. Yep, reactor Hellion, and the Lenok knows. He knows what's up. Two Hellions that early. There's only one build that it could be. Has Lenok seen that he's expanded? I'm not sure if that Overlord, that Overlord did peek in, sees the expansion, so... Uh, both players actually have a very good idea of what the other is doing. We're probably not going to see um, some games kind of come down. It's like if you can deny scouting from your opponent long enough, you can do something kind of crazy that catches them off guard, like six port banshee. Um, but right now, both players <laughs> very in tune with what the other is doing. Exactly. Leonok actually made a spine crawler and then canceled it or okay. as it was finishing and now was making a second one just to make sure because he saw two extra Hellions. He wants to now have that spine crawler because it's four instead of two. He doesn't want to overcommit. He does have his queen in a decent spot here. The Hellion's going to try to run in and do some damage, but nice positioning by Leonok. Yeah, this is... has. I'm not sure if Dream has seen speed being done, but basically at this point, 
any kind of harass becomes extremely risky by Dream. Just by poking in that far, he's liable to get surrounded by speedlings. Um, and you can actually see, instead of trying to kill the lings, Leonok is going for a counterattack into the natural. It raises Supply Depot! Oh! Oh! Dream! Oh man, no. Dream is in so much trouble now. He's actually going to lose the Tech Lab researching ah. stim. Cannot be repaired, and he's actually going to take out a lot of these STBs as well, but and with these Marines and Marauders coming in. That's really damaging. That sets behind the... Um, the timing that's going to come out with Stim being delayed, he's got to rebuild that tech lab, taking a lot of damage. And in the main, there we get a shot of it. Uh, the Hellion's actually doing a little bit of damage, but ugh, I'm not I'm not liking Dream's position right now. Yeah, right now he has 11 workers down, not a spot you want to be in. Of course, like you said, that Stim delayed, he had to rebuild the tech lab, and during all of that, wasn't building any units from that barracks. Can you do a uh, Control R? Control R. There you go. Workers killed. So, wait. Is that Dream? Leenok killed five workers? I think it yes, is, because I think some workers died. So yeah. Leenok did kill five workers with the um, that Hellion harass, which is pretty nice. Um, and Dream did not get any kills with the Hellions. Right, the Hellions. workers. Yeah, the Hellions just basically went in, uh, got caught by Lings, did a bit of damage. We didn't see most of that, but didn't do any significant economic damage. One thing to note, because Leenok decided to make those Lings instead of early drones, if Dream had defended that, he actually would have been quite ahead because all those lings weren't drones. They don't do a whole ton of damage. Taking out the tech lab, getting out stim, killing some SCVs, very good for Leonard. Indeed it was. Now, during all of this, a spire has been started. A third base, or rather, excuse yep. me, a third hatchery has been started as well. It's going to help him wall off against any pressure. But not only that, he's going to have a lot more production. He doesn't want to take that third base just yet because he knows Dream's behind and Dream... This is the kind of timing where Dream wants to be aggressive to make up for what he's already lost. He's certainly he's trying to run in here, but this time Dream raises the depot, is not going to let those links get in his base a second time. Not going to make the same mistake twice. Um, and I'm not I'm not really sure about Leenak's decision to put the hatch in his base. I think he's playing uh, maybe overly cautious, um, and that could be because of his opponent, just specifically against Dream. He's not going to put that hatch out. But he has good good vision of the map if we go, well, we can't control, but if you go to Leenok's vision, if you kind of look at what he sees, he's basically got Overlords, Creep, and Lings covering his whole side of the map. He sees everything that's going on, um, and he'll have plenty of time to react to it. Exactly. Leenok's one of those players that plays really patiently, loves to get those extra hatcheries. He doesn't want to take a third base too soon. He plays very defensively. He knows he did some damage, just wants to play a safe game, but I agree. In this case, he's playing maybe a little too safe, but he doesn't necessarily know it. He only knows what's going on on his side of the map. And part of the reason why like, QXC and I both think he's playing a little too safe is because he could take a third base because he sees that no pushes are coming because he has entire vision on right. the side of the map. Um, and we... Did he get Burrow? He I did, feel, actually. He wanted, like he wanted to Burrow some Banelings earlier, but Dream spotted them. We didn't get a shot of them. They had to retreat. Are is those, burrowing wait, some wait, the gold. Oh, there are some Burrowed Banelings in the gold line there. And that... That's one of those moves that could pay off, could not pay off, but if it does pay off, it'll be huge. I think he just loaded SCVs into that bunker. Yeah, he did, actually. <laughs> yep, he's got two SCVs in that bunker. Um, SCVs, not actually the best combat unit from uh -oh. the bunker. Back at the natural, some Marines are going to walk over Banelings. Didn't get oh, a shot oh. of it. Some Marines just got just owned lost by a Banelings. a lot of Bane, or a lot of... Yeah, he lost a lot of Banelings, also lost a lot of Marines. <laughs> well, it was two Banelings for about 12 Marines, and like... I guess you could say like 18 Marines in total because a lot of Marines at half health. Quite a bit of damage. Uh, Dream really behind on his tech right now. He needs to get medevacs. He, he really needs a Raven. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I know a lot of Terrans. Yeah, a lot of Terrans. That is the race that I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, speech. I don't know what's wrong with me right now. A lot of Terrans haven't been building Ravens. They're like, I'm just going to move across the map and scan six times to get to my opponent's base. But... Getting a Raven, man, it's so good. Yeah, the, so good. the only trade-off that Terrans have for getting a Raven is because they have to have a tech lab on the starport to do that. Right. It's good to just switch one, get a Raven out, and switch back to your reactor to get your medevacs out. Man, Terrans I just aren't doing that. Just build two ports. Or you could do that as well. You build two ports, you get either one or two tech labs, you don't need a reactor, because you really only need one to two Ravens. Like, you could get Hunter Seeker, which is what I'm going to start testing around with and fooling with, but just for Banelings, you just get one Raven, you're all set. You've got two ports, you can make Medivex, it's no big deal. Um, both players taking their third now. Dream making Medivex? Yeah, making out two Medivex and continuing with his upgrades here. 
Yeah, he does have plus one. He's got combat shields on the way. He's got armor on the way. A second factory finishing up for here for him as his third command center finishes. Leonong does have that third base. It's just now scanned, so Dream realizes it's up. He may actually decide to pressure here as he takes his third base. But he's got to be careful of these mutilists, which are taking out some of his That's tanks. Bad. Is uh, combat shield about 60% of the way done? One thing to note, right now, combat shields would be done. Um, and it's very hard to justify a push without combat shields. Your exactly. army is very weak. And Lena gearing up for a big attack here. He might just smash this army. He may tanks, actually do it. What are the tanks doing? The tanks just move back. They're like, uh, you know what? You just defend that base. I'm going to go over here. Leonok just sizing up the army, attacking a little bit, actually pulls back and takes the gold base. Yep. Could have been a little bit more aggressive there, but he's just again playing patiently and safely. That's and really look Leonok's at that style. Creep spread. That creep spread is disgusting. That man. is scary, man. It's actually I don't know if you, how well you guys can see the mini map, but he's actually got like three fourths of the map covered in creep essentially. Yeah. And the main pathways. Like there's some stuff off to the side, but units generally aren't gonna be moving along there. Creeping water looks really weird. It does. It and looks like an oh, oil spill. Hold that two thought. tanks go down. This is he actually could get bad. two more. And I think he's gonna get them. Gets one tank. Gets both tanks. This is looking really bad for Dream right now. He needs something to take care of those muse. And oh, very nice attack. Leonok just rolls in with the links and the bane links. Has to lift the orbital command. Where is? This is looking really bad. Dream's army is just it's in six different places, and he just doesn't have enough to tackle Leonok's army. Look at Leonok. You guys can't see it. Leonok's production tab. 58 Zerglings being made. He is going for it. He's been patient. He's like the tiger. He's been lurking in the forest, and now he's going to pounce. Here is Leenok. There he is. He's running in with these speed bands. The Marines desperately trying to run away. The SCV is clumping up. It looks like he is going to hold this, but like you said, a ton of units on the way. He lost that command center. He lost a ton of SCVs right now. It's 70 drones to 40 SCVs, and even though he's held this, he's so far behind at this point. And he does put up the supply depot in time, cleans up the attack, but the damage has really been done at this point. Lenex on his third, he's got the gold up, um, and I think, I'm not sure, do you think he's gonna make these into Banes? I almost feel like he could just, no, I, eh, He doesn't I quite have enough gas to do that right now. I think he's just gonna keep trading armies because he knows he's on four bases, including the gold. Here he goes, running forward here, there attacking the these links. siege tanks. And I don't think, I don't know if Dream can hold this. The bunker doing some work, needs to pull some SCVs to repair that. The medevac does go down, um, but 22 mute is on the field for Lenok. Very difficult position for Dream. He's uh, actually just now started his hive as well. He's getting plus two melee attacks, getting carapace for Oh, and a very nice drop from Dream. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you need to do to get back into the game. Yeah, you absolutely, when you get behind like this, you have to do drops, you have to take hidden expansions. You can't just try to catch up. It's never yep. going to work against you, a good player. You need to be constantly doing something to try and win the game. No, A player of this caliber, either player, if you sit back and you give them the opportunity to do whatever they want, you're gonna lose. Oh, this army of if Dream is just tiny. There's no way he can actually deal oh, with the army and of Lenok. Oh, and is gonna just smush it. Here come the Mutas, the Lings all over. Um, and the Mutas are just gonna clean these Marines up. Oh, that was like a Dream sandwich. GG! GG, Lenok takes it. Uh, very solid play from Lenok there. Yeah, Lenok just played super patient. There were a few times where QXC and I both were just kinda going, well, he could've gone a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. Didn't necessarily need to make that macro hatchery, but he just plays so safe. And Dream is actually a player who, in general, likes to do timing attacks, doesn't really like to play into the later game. It's not really his style, it's not his strength, from what I've seen of him. And I think Leonok just realized that said he's going to be patient, and then it's almost like he was so patient that Dream forgot that he could be aggressive, and then he just went for it, and Dream was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! There's Lings over here, there's Lings over there, there's Zerlings, Muta's, Banelings, I can't deal with this. He had his tanks in like four different places. He had some tanks sieged up in his main. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, yeah. A couple of the tanks moved out. Part of the problem there is it's like it's hard to notice these things are happening when you're the observer because you see both players' vision. But if you look at Dream's vision there, it was just like his base and then blackness. He had no idea the big attacks were coming. He didn't know where to position his units. Um, and most of that stemmed from... Either he wasn't macroing as well as he should have, or just the early pressure really threw him off, but he just didn't have the ability to really make himself a presence on the map. Losing the tech lab like that and losing that stim kind of just snowballs everything. Because yeah. you lose it, then you can't be aggressive at that timing, your combat shields are late, everything just kind of falls apart from there. It's a very, very important upgrade. Would really like to have seen him just build a second tech lab and start combat shields. Yeah, that just actually would have been really smart to get that going. Would have been a great choice. Yep.
So we are actually loaded up into the next game. Yeah, the next map is Terminus RE. Um, very common map for fast expansions. Also kind of common for two racks. At least I two racks on this map, whatever. All right, let's and jump into let's the game. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I copied you. That's cool. So is our mic off? Well, then.